are you looking the online platform that can teach you the beauty of advanced physics? Have you ever think about how you can understand, master, enjoy the beauty of advanced physics? Those are the, some of the questions that I know actually are uh, being asked, with, uh, asked by the advanced secondary students in Tanzania and even in African continents and worldwide. So I don't know about the answer, your answer for those questions and even for the other questions. But one thing which I want to tell you in advance, whether it's your first time or second time or third time to meet with me, I would like to tell you that you might get the right answer of that questions that you have some problems in advanced physics, so you have been looking a place that can help you. My name is Olen Jolai, Moko Tayailo Singo. Simply just you can call me Olen Jolai. I thank God for his own grace who has given me a gift of teaching. So I'll be a teacher who is going to teach you advanced physics. Again, I thank God for his own grace who have created a true love of science. So I really love science since I met it and even to these times, and I don't think if I will never retire or I will retire on loving science. So I will be standing on the positions of a physicist, but not a professional physicist, just a physicist who can teach you what I know. But I want to warn you, remember that Olenjolai does not know everything about advanced physics. I just know small portions of it, but I have an assignment to teach others. So if that's the case, you can be asking yourself so many questions. What have we prepared today for you? What are we doing? How can we help you? So I know you have a number of questions, whether you're a parent or you're a student, you have a number of questions. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome all the national and international students who would like to enjoy the beauty of advanced physics. Again, I would like to welcome all the guardians, parents, uh, sponsors, leaders, and even and every kinds of the parents, even those parents that who don't have advanced students at this time, but according to the developments of education in Tanzania, I believe there is a time whereby in every family there is advanced secondary students who is pursuing science and mathematics. All right. So that's the point that I want to make. But before even I welcome you on and explain it to you briefly about what I've written on the blackboard, I would like to just to tell you the vision that we have in Tanzania online advanced secondary school uh, in square bracket on July M. The, the word of God says that in the book of Proverbs 20, chapter 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, people perish. So if you don't have visions in this purpose that you are doing with this business that we are doing, we can perish out. And I'm not ready myself to perish. I believe even yourself who is watching this program, you are not ready to perish. So this is the vision that has been written or has been revealed in my heart. I have an assignment to teach and train advanced secondary students on how they can extract knowledge, understanding, and wisdom from the classroom instructions in advanced physics, advanced chemistry, advanced mathematics, and best capital mathematics, and combine it with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom that I'm going to teach them to extract it from the Word of God in order to solve real life problems. In to also, Passing an exam is just a specific objective, but it's not the main objective. The main objective of to ASO is to teach our students to think differently and especially to know they have an assignment to ask, answer particular questions or to solve a real life problems. I know that in the classroom questions, most of them are not testing us to solve real life problems, but that's an assignment and that's the meaning of education. So right now, I believe that you have got this brief information which is very important. I would like to take you to navigate onto what I've written on the blackboard. There are some writings there, but just to spend a, with just a minute to navigate with you because it's very important. Then we'll get inside the session 60 because I'm very happy today to teach this session 60. Firstly, I would like to welcome you into our Tanzania Online Advanced Secondary School in Square Bracket College of IM. Simultaneously, because I'm teaching advanced mathematics, I would like to welcome you into one of our official YouTube channels that's called Tanzania Online A Level Second School in Square Bracket College of IM. So remember that the vision that we have, we have so many specific objectives, we have the main objective for this program. We have so many departments in our online school. One of the departments is called Advanced Physics, and the subject of the day is Advanced Physics for the Form 6, because we are teaching Advanced Physics Form 5 and Advanced Physics for the Form 6. Then we have 
six, we have five main topics in advanced in physics here for the form six here called the syllabus of the Republic of Tanzania. And one of them, which is chapter two, is called the current electricity. So I'd like to welcome you into the beauty of current electricity. And then this current electricity, just I break it down into two topics. One is called current electricity, and the other one is called the alternating current or AC theory. So I let you dedicate this content to all the pre-form 6 students, form 6 students, QT, grade 12 students, researchers who are receiving advanced physics, teachers also who are teaching advanced physics in Tanzania, in Africa, and worldwide, because this program is a global program. So however, that right now will be focused on the contents and the syllabus of United Republic of Tanzania. So if you're an international student, remember what you are teaching you is what you have to cover as advanced secondary student. We are in session 60, and this is titled as problem solving, problem solving of conductions of electricity in metal conductor. So session 60 depends session 4 and session 5. So this is the applications of the concept that you have learned in session 4 and session 5. Again, if it's your first time to visit you or to visit our official YouTube channel. In order for you to get notifications of any new session, because this is session 60, in current electricity itself, we're expecting or we have a vision of recording more than or having more than 25 sessions. So we we'll have so many sessions ahead. In order for you to get notifications from the YouTube community, we ask you to make sure that you click the buttons, which you can subscribe, and then choose the app, just click the icons of the bell in order to choose the options of all. So you'll get the official notifications whenever we add any new video. There's no need for me to come and make advertisements again in your mindset. Lastly, before we start our today's session, how can you interact with me? This is the online platform. The main challenge, how a student can interact with his or her teacher uh, online. It means that not physically. So at this moment, you can use the the platforms of comment sections in order to interact with me. You may give me a feedback whether you understand the contents or not. You may give me a feedback about how did you find the materials, are they helpful? But you can give me a testimony, how these contents helped you, how did I solve your problems. But again, you can use the comment section to submit the homework. In every session, I will be leaving the homework to my students in order for you to learn the method which is changing the world right now that's called the uh, active learning. So active learning means the students participating either, participating full in the process of what of learning. So we're going to have some quizzes, we're going to have some homeworks. So you can give me a feedback about uh, your achievements of the homework in the comment section. I want to tell you that I used to read comment sections of every video, so you should not ex we should expect it that I'm going to answer your comment or somebody else in the world is going to answer your comment. So I believe right now you are ready. Again, this is a program for the serious students. Right now, I ask you to take your scientific calculator. I forgot mine, I'm going to take it. So yourself, you have also to take your scientific calculator. And then say, I'll take the exercise book, your pen, your fresh mindset, and then let us go into the mindset. But before we start anything else, I would like to pray for you just for a minute in order for God to open your mind and understand these informations and omit any kinds of the challenges that uh, you used to encounter. Myself through prayers, that's the technique that I used in my advanced education and even in my channel of teaching. I use the method of prayer to get the connection between the teacher as a transmitter and the students as a receiver. So let us pray. Regardless of your faith, regardless of your religions, we are praying to the Most High God. So this should not confuse you, just I'm putting you in the hands of God who is with you at this moment. Our Father who is in heaven, we come before your presence. We say thank you for this invitation. We'd like to welcome you into this moment, into this class. Open our mind in order to understand current electricity beyond of what it is required to understand in order to solve real life problems that come relating to the uh, current electricity. Our Father, we learn to solve problems and these problems have been developed from the real life situation. Father, open our mind, give us courage, and give us a good understanding to understand beyond of what is going to be taught. Holy Spirit, welcome to, take, to be in charge in order to do this great business in the minds of Tanzanians, Africans, and worldwide. We give you all the glory, Father. 
myself as a teacher of this program, I give you all the glory. And even all my students who are watching this program, we have to give you all the glory and praise because you deserve. You are the one who is teaching in me in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us go into the business. So, uh, before I go into this example 16, let me just do a quick review. A quick review, which actually that it connects session 6 with session 4 and session 5. So, quick review of what? Of session 4 and the session 6. Session 4 and session 5. So, basically, we ha have been teaching you about conduction. Uh, conduction of what? Conduction of current electricity in metals. Okay, conduction of current in metals or in metal conductors. So then I have told you about it. So from there, we deduced it that the magnitude of current is equal to number of electrons per unit volume uh, times electronic charge times drift velocity. Then we have what is times cross sectional area of the conductor. In the image of the conductors, we assume most of the conductors are cylinders in this way. So they have cross sectional area, they contain number of electrons, and then there's a volume, right? At the point that you have to remember every time. But again, uh, later on, I told you about how you can reduce the magnitude or the formula that, or derive the formula that gives you the res resistance uh, of the conductor, means the resistance of the conductor against the flow of electric current. So you say it's the mass of electron, then my by what? The length of the conductor, okay, then divided by number of electrons per unit volume, times electronic charge square. Then we have what? Times cross-sectional area times relaxation time. You should not cram these formulas. I told you in session four how you can derive them. But again, uh, in, the, in session five, I told you how you can use this formula and the principle of conductive of resistivity to get the formula for the res resistivity. So can you remind me? Because uh -huh, so I have some physical students. Resistivity is equal to it? Huh? Yeah, not the end. Number of electrons per unit volume. Times what? Give me the formula of resistivity, my dear student. Area times resistance over the length. Pardon? Area times resistance over the length. Guys, I'm not talking about this one. Resistance is equal to resistivity times length of a cross-sectional area. I'm asking the form of resistivity in terms of the functions of relaxation time. Mass. So it's what? Because from this one you can reduce. So it is what? Mass of electron. Huh? Mass of electron. Over. Over. Number of, electrons. Number of electrons per unit volume. Electronic charge square. Times electronic charge square. Times relaxation time. Times relaxation time. So this is the formula for what? For resistivity. Right, we didn't do an example uh, anyway. We did just some few examples in session five, but we'll be concentrating today on how we can use these formulas to solve problems. But we didn't end there, we deduced again an expression or the formula of finding conductivity as a function of relaxation time. But remember that he, so these are the formula, and uh, another formula we say that conductivity uh, or conductivity is a reciprocal property of resistivity. Right? Yes. So another formula we say that the conductivity is equal to what? Is equal to number of electrons per unit volume yes. times electronic charge square times time of what? Mass of, Mass of 40 of electrons. Just from this one. Conductivity is equal to reciprocal sort of resistivity. The form of resistivity, so if you reciprocate, you get this guy. Okay? Yes. But when we have been when I've been teaching you about session five, again we have established it, uh what you now, an expression that resistance is inverse proportional to to relaxation time. And also, in the use and other expressions, if you do remember, resistance is very proportional to to temperature. Okay, but in the use and other expression, which might be helpful for you, that resistance is very proportional to the length. And also, in the use the another formula, we say that resistance is inverse proportional to what cross-sectional area. Physics is a beautiful subject. Right? So, even yourself, when you review this content several times and you, while you are a fresh mindset, fresh mindset, okay, fresh mindset, you can keep this information for the rest of your life. So, don't think that it's a miracle. That's why we have 
pray to God, all of this information can keep them and cannot be confused and can keep on with other things in the daily life. Okay, in session five, I left the homework. Now it's a time for me to get the feedback. Unfortunately, there is no any students until this time who have submitted the homework. In. Uh, so the comment section, you might be the one you can submit, but I would like to do corrections in order to open your mind. But if you want, you are not limited. This is the technique that you may use. If maybe you can find that because you are going to do the correction, you can pause the video, right? You can pause the video. You can stop the video because as a student, they don't understand what the means of force. You can stop the video and try to solve this question. The question is this one. And try to solve this homework. Homework is five. Okay? And try to solve on the rough paper. Then, after you have done it, in order for you to do correction, you just continue to watch the video, and then you can do correction, and you see how correct you are. Right? Remember that you have to practice in physics as long as you can. So, let us do correction, because I know this is a little bit challenging question before I present to you example 60. Let us do correction for what is for the questions of homework is six. Again, another thing of homework five. Another thing that I want to tell you in physics is physics is the study of what is, of matter and in relation to what it to end. So it's a study of facts. So sometimes whenever you are doing something in physics, you have to think about the reality. Reality remains a reality. Again, remember if it's your first time, you have never subscribed onto our channel, remember to click the button of subscribe in order for you to get notifications when session 7 and 8 and 9 and 10 of current electricity will be in air or ready to be in air in telecommunications towers. Okay, so calculate, so let us read the question carefully and we try to check the keywords. Okay, calculate the drifting velocity in copper wire. So calculate, first of all, what is required in drift velocity in a copper wire of diameter. So you've been given what is the diameter of the copper wire. Carrying a current, so you've been given a current. Current is 10 ampere. But the first sentence of the question. Okay. Then, the next sentence, given the density of the copper, so you've been given numerical value of density of copper. Then we've been given atomic weight of the copper which is 65.5 gram per mole. This is molar mass of copper. Every piece of information being given there is useful. And we have also to understand and remember some few concepts that you learn them consistently in chemistry. Okay? So this is the molar mass. So you've been given molar mass of 40 of copper. Assume each atom of copper contributes one free electrons for what is for conduction. Right? So let us go into the business solution. The first state always, because I'll be teaching you by following steps, this is the trick that I've been using for so many years, and many students, they found they have been enjoying the trick that I've been using. The first step, just to summarize the data given, okay, in order for you to know what I'm lacking about. The first piece of information being given is this velocity. So if you have done it and then you missed it, right now you can do with me or you can do correction. So this velocity is not given, so it's required. So what you have to find. Then another piece of information be given diameter. Diameter will be given diameter of 40, diameter of copper. This is the chemical symbol of copper. Diameter of copper, which you can call it all, we have a symbol of D. It's given as 126 exponent 20. 1.6 exponent negative 3. Excuse me for some external noises that are happening at this place. Ignore them. Just focus on the session. Okay? So carrying a current of 40 of 10 ampere. Okay? So carrying a current of 40 of 10 ampere. So you have a current, so just jump from this part to this part. So you have current. I know many students are used to quit. Uh, this section they find that they, they used to think that they are wasting time but this is the trick whenever you want to master problem solving in physics so it's 10 ampere and then we have what given the density of the copper so density of 40 density of copper so density of copper which is this one so density of copper is equal to 29 
exponent 9 kilogram per meter cube. Atomic weight of the copper, so they've been given molar mass. So they've been given molar mass. I know many students, they used to write the formula and solve the question. That's not a trick we are using in advanced physics. So in advanced physics, we like to write important information as well as we can in order to be sure. So we have, so this velocity is not given, we'll be given a small piece of information. And then the conditions means that we have to assume each atom of copper contribute one free electrons for conduction. Okay, by the first step. The second step, I know that many students, they can just recall the formula that can help them to get drift velocity. Okay, so to get drift yachting, this is velocity, okay, fine. It's, it's, it's right. So we call it. Recall the formula. Okay. Of 40 of current in what in metal conductor. So in metal conductor. So I told you how you can derive current is equal to is equal to number of electrons per unit volume times electronic charge times velocity, times cross-sectional area. So this is drift velocity. So you can make drift velocity the subject. So you have NE divided R times cross-sectional area. Here we have NEN. So this one, so we find that drift velocity is equal to current of a number of electrons per unit volume times electronic charge times cross-sectional area. My dear students, I have taught more than 2,000 students uh, the beauty of current electricity physically. But I want to tell you that in this session, God has prepared me in a different style, in a very fresh anointing that I've never taught in other students. So you have a great opportunity to be taught in a high level the beauty of current electricity. So that the form, I know every student can reach there. Now, we can check according to the data. Are we given the current? Yes. Do we have number of volume per unit? We have number of electrons per unity volume? No, we don't have. Do we know electronic charge? Yes, it is constant. Do we know cross-sectional area? No, but we'll be given diameter. So always, so it means what are we missing from this formula? So what are we missing from this formula? We still have two unknown variables that we have to deal with them. And always, whenever you are solving physics problems, try to start from the simple concept, then go higher. So the simple concept, the simple variable here is what? Another thing that I want to tell you, I used to, I use a very different techniques. Those are the techniques that God has been teaching me. I've been using myself. I've been uh, successful on applying them and also I'm teaching students. And the technique that I'll be using in teaching you advanced physics, advanced any subjects, even physics for the form one, I use these techniques, is teaching you how you can solve a problem by following steps and write in each step what are you doing. I know for most of the students, they, they can not that that is a bore. It's boring to you, but it's very important because, for example, in advanced physics, we have so many concepts. So sometimes you may learn concepts, you understand, but you can forget them easily. But if you write the state, for example, recall the formula of currents in metal conduct. Later on, when you want to do the quick review, you can, you, it means that, for example, can you imagine? If just write, just you jump from this line, you just come here. Then, you know, what are you doing here? So you can ask it yourself. In means that in, when you have a short time, it's difficult for you. That's why many students, they end on claiming formulas and claiming definitions, etc., etc. But if you write, even in your future revisions, you know what you have done here, right? So that's what I want to, to tell you. They said this step. So they said this step, we say that let us compute it. Let us compute it. Cross-sectional area. So cross-sectional area, if you be given diameter, is equal to pi d square of what over four. Not just yes, we can compute it or we can just recall its formula and then inject all the stuff there and then wait what is going to say. So recall, recall what? Recall the formula of finding what cross-sectional area. So cross-sectional area is equal to pi d square of what over four. So this is equation two. Okay, so let me use this, the second column and the third column to solve these problems. So I can leave the question, so the blackboard for your
very few. So now from this formula, we can find the cross-sectional area, okay? So in that case, we say that let us substitute, substitute your, the substitute equation two, the substitute equation two into, into equation one. So substitute equation two into equation one, say beauty velocity is equal to current, okay? Number of electrons, electronic charge. Here we have pi d square over four. So if this is the case, so this becomes as numerator, so you have four times current, or electric current, then you have number of electrons per unit volume, we have electronic charge, then times pi times diameter of the conductor, right? So this in physics we say it's the equation three. So for i, then n e d square pi, this is equation three. Okay? Afterwards, so we have this form. We don't know the beauty velocity, we don't know number of electrons, for unit volume. So we go into what in the force system. Okay? It's force system. You can also even call this one the force system. There's no any limitation. The meaning of steps is just to give you understanding of what you're doing. So if that's the case, the first system right now, uh huh? Uh huh? So the first state, let us compute your T, let us compute T number of electrons per unit volume. This is the most challenging. To compute number of electrons per unit volume support the information that will be given. We are going to use the informations of 40, density of copper and the molar mass of 40 of copper. And here we have to go back at least into the atomic structure or into the chemistry a little bit, but chemistry of all so we say that recall, we told you in chemistry for form two, but recall that we say that molar mass of copper is equal to Avogadro's number of electrons. Right? Or we say that, it, that the, what, what does it mean? One mole of copper, this is according to the Dalton's, one mole of copper in Avogadro's, who has been a scientist, one mole of copper is equal to Avogadro's constant, or is equal to, means one mole of copper contain Na or Avogadro's number of 40 of electrons. And one mole is represented by what is molar mass of copper. So this is a symbol for the molar mass. So it means what the molar mass of copper? The molar mass of copper is 65.35 gram per mole, so we have to express it in kilogram. So you have to convert it into kilogram. So it will be 65.5 exponent negative three kilogram. This is equal to what? This is equal to what? To Avogadro's number of electrons. It's the point where you find the, the, what, the concept. So if that the case, we want to know the number of electrons contained in the copper what? In the copper wire. Right? In the copper wire. Yeah. So to know the number of electrons containing the copper wire, again, we have to recall this fact. So if that's the case, we say that this is equation four. And we got the sixth state. As physics team, we have to think differently. So then we say that recall what you taught you in the concept of the density as the second topic of physics from one, which is measurement. So recall that we told you, density of substance is equal to mass of a volume, right? Mass of a volume. So it means that the mass of the substance is equal to density times what is volume. Okay? So if that's the case, this will make your equation five. My physical students here are not writing. I think that I'll give them another time for them to write. Well, according to my assessment, they, didn't, they missed this question. Okay. So, right now, we have, we know that this amount of mass of copper contains what Avogadro's number of electrons. Then, you have mass is equal to mass of copper, means for this case, you say mass of what? Of copper is equal to density of copper times volume of 40 of copper. So if that the case, we want to see now, we want to do the comparison, okay? So we go into the seventh step. 
the seventh step, we said that let us compute it. Let us compute the number of electrons in the copper. Right? That the means of n, number of electrons in the copper. So we say that 65, 25, exponent third. Exponent negative 3 kilogram, which is mass, molar mass of copper, is equal to Avogadro's number. Then, what the mass now? So we have to find the given mass of this copper is what? The given mass of copper that we have to find and uh, the amount or the number of electrons which is contained is given by this formula. That mass is equal to density of copper. So it's a density of copper which we, we have been given times the volume of copper which we don't know. Right? This one will give us the number of electrons contained. Wonderful. Physics, physics is beautiful. So for this case, now we can cross multiplication. Right? So in this multiplication, we, after crossing multiplication, we have 65. I know some students are not believing. Just keep waiting. I'm not believing that what you are doing. Okay, times the number of electrons. Then we have density of copper times the volume of copper times sorty Avogadro's number. What are we looking for? Number of electrons in the copper. So we divide by 65, 25, exponent negative 3 kilogram. And here we divide by what? 65, 25, exponent negative 3 kilogram. Okay. So in the case, we say number of electrons is equal to it. Is equal to density of copper times sort volume of copper. Then we have what? Avogadro's number, uh -huh. then divided by what? Divided by what? By 65, 25, what? Exponent what? From negative 70. We can compute or we can leave it. Or simply this one is smaller mass. Divided by what? Smaller mass of what? Of copper. Okay? It's simple. Okay. So in that case, this will make it question what? Question 6. I love solving questions in this state. It's not complications, it's just clarifying in order to meet every kind of a doubt. So we go into what is the eighth step. So for this case, it means we've been thinking about what we are not computing. So this one, we say that he, yeah, the aim is computing n. So we go into the eighth step. The eighth step, we say that we recall, we told you in session four, number of electrons per empty volume is given as what? N is equal to the number of electrons over volume. So we are looking at the number of electrons per unit volumes of copper is equal to number of electrons of copper over what? Volume of copper. So this is what? This is equation seven. Okay? So because you have this information and I want you to understand, I want you to make careful that me clean this part. Okay, so if that the case now, huh? so we have to substitute equation 60 into, into equation 7. So that's the ninth step. So ninth step, then, okay, let us then substitute, it. substitute equation what? Equation 60 into, into equation 7. So number of electrons per unit volume is equal to what? Huh? Is equal to density of copper multiplied by what? Volume of copper. Huh? I'm sorry, Avogadro's number. Huh? Divided by what? Molar mass of 40 of copper. Huh? Then divided by what? Divided by volume of 40, volume of copper. Right? So this makes what? This makes the density of copper multiplied by volume of copper, Avogadro's number, Avogadro's constant, then divided by what? Molar mass of copper, then volume of copper. Because just you take this one divided by this one over one. So if you are yeah, dividing two physical quantities, then you, you know, change the sign, the symbol, and this the form. So volume of copper cancel volume of copper. I know one of the challenges my students have encountered how they can find volume of copper. 
So you've been struggling. So now, number of electrons per unit volume is equal to density of copper times Avogadro's constant divided by what? Divided by molar mass of 40 of copper. This makes equation what? Equation 8. Wonderful, right? So because you have equation 8, and here we have what? So because you have equation 8 there, We have equation eight, so we have to substitute in equation three, right? So we go into the ninth step. Not to worry about the number of steps, just to understand what you are doing. So substitute, substitute equation eight in what? So substitute equation eight in equation three. So what are you, where are we looking? Drift velocity. This velocity is equal to what? 4 times what current of what? Number of electrons per unit volume, which is what? Density of copper. Multiply by what? Avogadro's constant. Uh -huh. Then of what? Molar mass of what? Of copper. Mm -hmm. Then we have what? Then we have times what? Electronic heat charge. Then diameter of copper wire. Then pi. Okay, so the next step, this one become a numerator and the rest remains as denominator. All right, are you there? This is advanced physics and this is current electricity. It's beautiful, but sometimes it's pain. Okay, so in the case, you say drifting velocity now is equal to 4 times current times what? Molar mass of copper divided by what? Density of copper. Then we have Avogadro's constant. Then times electronic charge pi diameter squared. Right? So you have all the information just to plug and play. So now, so you can even use the subscript of D just to differentiate this to reverse from what from volume you're allowed. So you have four. What is current? 10 ampere. What is mass of molar mass of copper? 65.5 exponent what? Exponent negative three kilogram divided. What is density of copper? I think it is nine exponent three, isn't it? What is Avogadro's constant? Regardless number, I see, so 6.20. I had my scientific calculator. You guys, where? Ah, this one. Take your scientific calculator now. So, Avogadro's constant, there's no need for you to cram. Yes, you can press constant dot. Constant 24. So, constant. Constant 24. Constant. Hmm? It is 60.02. Uh -huh. From the question, uh, the density of copper is 9 exponent 9. 9 exponent 9? Yes. No, it's 9 exponent 3. You copied it there. Nine okay, so I made a mistake. Yes, correct. 9 exponent 3. And uh, what is Avogadro's number? Avogadro's number it is 60.02. 23, 6, 20, 0, 2, 20, 23, right? Uh, but here we still have some other quantities. So simply, I should have a long line here. Due velocity is equal to this. And density of copper is 9, it's 20, 20, 3. Regardless, it's 6, 20, 0, 2, it's 20, 23. Then electronic charge is what? 1.6 negative 19, then times what pi, then times diameter. What is diameter? 1.6 exponent three, negative three. So it is 1.6 exponent negative three, not 20 squared. So what's your drift velocity? Use your scientific calculator. Put all of those information, you will find drift velocity, it is what?
3.75 profit, 3.75 exponent negative 4 meter second. And if you do remember, can you go to example four, the one that we didn't write in the number? We found the digital velocity there. It isn't. How much was it? 1.560? So I got it four. So my dear student from today onward, the range of the digital velocity of electrons in the conductor should be excellent negative four. But the secret. We are revealing secrets here. So if you have got a negative 35, you know, there's no need for you to wait the teacher for it. So you can put a wrong man. If you've got maybe a teach velocity is exponent 9, range of exponent 9, the answer you know, but you have got an answer, but it's not correct. Okay, so that's the point. How did I know that this is the range of digital velocity? Just to go and do more than five questions asking about which velocity for the uh, which velocity of electrons in the conductor, you'll find the range is exponent negative four. It may be changed, maybe exponent negative three, exponent negative five, but should be within around there. Right? But if you you you'll get the digital velocity is maybe three point seven five exponent ten meter per second. I mean that an electron is traveling with a very high speed compared to the speed of light, which is not correct. Right? Yeah, so that the lift So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the right answer is yeah. what the lift velocity, lift velocity of what of electrons in copper wire. So some students say, ah, sir, we missed it because of the density of copper. Okay, pour out. Those are the human errors. The issue is if you have missed because the density of copper to be exponent nine. Then just you can plug this one and then you get the correct answer. Then off we go. I made a mistake myself on writing the questions on the blackboard, not on the on the exercise book. So the velocity of the electrons in copper wire is what? 3.75 exponent to exponent negative 4 meter per second. Okay? So if that the case, if you have any question about example 5. Don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section and don't hesitate to ask the other students in the world in the commenting section. So, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that now you are ready for example six. Is this it? So, get prepared. Example six is coming. And it's not direct questions that you think you may think, it's always challenging because you are um, advanced students who love physics. Example seven. So a second, so write to me this question quickly. A certain lens, a certain lens of what? It's the lens of copper wire. Of mass 4.5 kilograms has a resistance has a resistance of 14.7 oh. calculate the lens Calculate the lens and diameter of the wire. And the diameter of the wire. Diameter of the wire. Given that density, density of what? Density of copper to let it not nine, it's only three kilogram per meter cubic, but it is eight eight thousand 
is 8,930 kilogram per meter cubic and the resistivity of copper resistivity of copper is 128 128 exponent negative negative 8 muho you know the unit of muho what does it mean that the question remember that this is the active learning program you are allowed to pause a video and try to solve example 7 or problem 7 on a rough paper then you do correction you can stop the video so you can spend at least five minutes to solve this problem on the piece of paper then you continue to watch the video to see or to do the correction or to see uh, how did you succeed or to see or to analyze your solutions compared to the correct solution that is given by Olin July to millions of present and future students who love physics. Okay, so let us read the questions. A certain length of a copper wire of mass 4.5 kilogram has a resistance of 14.7 ohm at the resistance of what of the copper wire. So this copper wire has been measured. First of all, think a minute. Because the first sentence is talking about mass and resistance. You can stop writing and think a minute. What the mass of this copper wire? 4.5 kilograms. So 4.5 kilograms actually it might be a long copper wire or a heavy copper wire or a high cross-sectional uh, height with or a thick copper wire. 4.5, you know 4.5? It's a weight of 40 of a bone channel. Or okay. So it means that the first sentence. The second sentence calculate the length and the diameter of the wire. Given that density of copper is that one and the resistivity of copper is that one. So, solution. I believe that you have paused the video. Pause the video means you stop the video, then you do, then you check the correction. The first step always of all your life to solve problems is let us analyze the data given in the problem first of all to know what are we given and what are we not given. So first of all we've been given today mass of 40 of copper wire. So mass of copper wire which is presents at M is 4.25 kilograms. Then we have resistance of copper wire. So resistance Resistance of 40 of copper wire. So resistance of copper wire. This is equal to 14.7 of. Calculate the length and diameter. Ha. So we are looking for the length. This is required. Then another thing that is required: diameter. Diameter also is required. So we have two questions in one question. Then has the second sentence, at the end of second sentence, the second sentence, given that the density of copper wire, so we have the density, density of 40 of copper wire, density of copper wire, so this is 8,900, uh, what, 900, 930 kilogram per meter cube. It's nearly to nine exponent three kilogram. Then we'll be given resistivity. So one of the challenge here is the symbol of resistivity and density. Handwriting sometimes it's a little bit challenging. But let us maybe use the symbol P as just resistivity of copper. Or just okay we can just write a symbol P and then having this card. Okay, so simply that the resistance which is 1.8 exponent negative 8. What? Moho. Again, you have to know the range of resistivity even for the practical physics, which is paper 3 in Tanzania. You have to know the range of resistivity is always the order of resistivity is exponent negative 8. 
the city of the most of 40 conductors, even in practical question. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us deal with the business that we have. We go into the second stage. How can I determine the length of this wire? So to compute the length of this wire, we say that we have to recall two formulas, which are very important. So recall the formula, the formula of what? Of computing what? Computing density. So compute, the formula of computing density, for example, of copper wire is equal to mass of copper over volume of copper, right? But again, mass of copper is mass of copper, but this volume of copper can be expressed in terms of what is cross-sectional area of the copper wire and length of the copper wire, right? So this one, it will be what? So volume of copper wire is equal to cross-sectional area of copper wire times length of 40 of copper wire. But the concept. So, resist, so this is density of copper wire. Is equal to what? Mass of copper wire of what? Cross-sectional area of copper wire, length of copper wire. So this is equation one. Again, so this is all about this, this formula relate density of copper wire, mass of copper wire, cross-sectional area of copper wire, and length of copper wire. But in example seven, we are given also what is, we are given mass of the wire, so it will be useful there, but we are given again resistance of the wire, we are given the resistivity of the wire. So we have, so why did they recall these formulas, or why am I recalling this formula? I'm recording this formula according to the data we've been given in the question. Stop claiming physics. Stop claiming current electricity. Reinforce yourself to understand it. And God is there to help you. Because God is virtuous always. So that's the second state. So we call the formula for of density. Okay, we go into the third state, ladies and gentlemen. So after what we call the formula, the formula that can help us uh, to compute resistance of the wire, right? So we taught you in session, what, session four and session five, the resistance, uh, actually the resistance of a conductor is very proportional to the length of copper wire and very proportional to the cross-sectional area of copper wire. So it means that uh, this one, so we say that resistance is equal to resistivity, resistivity of water of copper wire times length of copper wire over cross-sectional area of copper wire. So this, ladies and gentlemen, become our equation what? Physics is beautiful. <laughs> should not bother yourself. You just have to follow the principles, the formulas, then you enjoy the life in physics. But remember, if you enjoy life in physics, you will enjoy on solving real life problems in the society. So ladies and gentlemen, we may go into the fourth system. So the fourth system, we say we are looking for the lens. This formula contains lens, this formula contains lens. So you may choose either substitute equation one in equation two, or substitute equation two in equation one. So you have two options. Okay, so substitute. Equation one into question two. Okay, substitute equation one into equation two. So say resistance of the wire, the copper wire, is equal to re, is equal to resistivity of copper wire. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to substitute it, yeah. So this formula we can let us advance it a little bit. This formula, just to wait. Make cross-sectional area of copper wire the subject here. Stop writing. So before we substitute, before we substitute, we go into the fourth state. So we say that make what? Make cross-sectional area of copper wire in equation one the subject. So we have what? Density of copper wire is equal to what? is equal to mass of copper wire divided by what? Processional area of copper wire, length of copper wire. So if you make this the subject, it means we cross multiplication. So processional area of copper wire, this is given as what? Mass of copper wire, of what? Density of copper wire, 
Krebs lens of copper wire. Right? So this is just we can call it equation theory. So now we go into the fifth state. The fifth state we say that substitute substitute equation what? Equation three into equation what? Equation two. So equation two, which is what? Resistance. Is equal to what? Is equal to resistivity of copper wire. Then times what? Length of copper wire divided by what? Cross-sectional area of copper wire, which is equal to mass of copper wire of what? Density of copper wire. Then times what? Length of copper wire. Right? So this one becomes a numerator. So if it comes numerator, in the numerator we have resistivity of copper wire times what? So we have length of 40. So it means that if you divide the length of copper wire become a numerator, so it will be length of copper wire square, length of copper wire square, and then we still have what? Density times density of 40, density of copper wire, divided by what? Mass of 40, mass of copper wire. Ten. Are we together? So that's the formula. So now from this formula, so we have equations, we can make length of copper wire the subject. So I believe you have already finished the copy example seven. So it means our formula of resistance is equal to resistivity of copper wire times density of copper wire. Then you have length of copper wire square divided by what? Mass of 40 of copper wire. So make our the subject. So make length of copper square of 40 the subject. So if you make the length of copper wire the subject, so it means that this is L square is equal to resistance of copper wire times mass of copper wire divided by what? Resistivity of copper wire, density of copper wire. So to find length of copper wire, we have to do this business. So length of copper wire is equal to square root of what? Resistance, mass of copper wire, divided by resistivity of copper wire, resistivity of copper wire, then times density of copper wire. Okay? So for this formula, this will be our equation three. So it can help us to get what in the length of copper wire. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, physics is beautiful. So length of copper wire, and the square root for the resistance is 14 point what? 14 point? My students are not, not watching. 14.7. And mass of copper wire is 4.5. It's divided by what? Resistivity of copper wire is 1.8. So it's like negative 8, right? Applied by what? Density of copper wire. So density of copper wire is what? 8,930. So find the square root. So from there, we can get what? Length of 40. Length of copper. Length of copper wire is what? So use your scientific calculator. If you compute it, the length of copper wire is 60.41, which is 641 meter. That's why it has a mass like that one. 600 is 641 meter. Or 6.41 is for a 2 meter. So this is the length of 40 copper wire. So check your response when you've been trying. Is it, did you try? Did you succeed? Yes. If you've succeeded, congratulations. Keep it up. If you didn't succeed, don't give up. Learn from mistakes that you've done. Okay, so if I'm writing quickly or I'm teaching quickly, you can pause the video and copy the notes. Then you can move on. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with your tea. We are done with computations of lens of the copper wire. So because of lens of the copper wire, now we have an assignment to compute your tea diameter. Of the copper wire. We have different alternatives or different techniques to follow. So this will make the sixth state. 
So the sixth step to, com to compute diameter, we call it the formula for it. The formula that help us or show relationship between resistance, okay, the formula for it of resistance, and this is resistance is equal to it. resistivity of copper wire times length of copper wire that we have already computed of a cross-sectional area of copper wire. But cross-sectional area of copper wire is given as what? So length of copper, resistiv resistivity, excuse me, this is not density, it's resistivity. We are greater that to use this symbol. Okay, so this is resistivity of copper wire. Then we have times length of copper wire divided by what? Cross-sectional area of copper wire, it is pi, the amount of copper wire square of what? Over four. So resistance of copper wire is equal to what? Is equal to four, times resistivity of copper wire, times length of copper wire, over what? Over pi, the amount of copper wire, square. So what are we looking for? The amount of copper wire. So we say that make it, make the amount of copper wire, the subject. So to make it the subject, we have the amount of copper wire square, is equal to 4, the density, no resistivity of copper wire, the length of copper wire, divided by what? Pi of a resistance. Then you have to find the square root now to get the diameter. So it means the diameter of copper wire is equal to what? Square root of what? Square root of 4, resistivity of copper wire, Length of copper wire over pi times what? Resistance. So now we have the formula. We have just to compute the diameter of the copper wire. I believe up to this moment you enjoying the beauty of physics, the beauty of current electricity, which is beautiful. So this is four times what? Density of copper wire, no resistivity, excuse me, this is resistivity of copper wire times length of copper wire divided by what? Pi times resistance of the copper wire. So diameter of copper wire is equal to square root of 4 times resistivity of copper wire, which it is what? 1.8, is it? It's going negative 8, multiplied by length of copper wire, which is 441, which is 641, mm -hmm. divided by pi times resistance of copper wire, which is 14.23 yes. ohm. Right? 14.7. 14.7 ohm. So use your scientific calculator to do your computation. Therefore, diameter of what? Diameter of copper wire is so use your scientific calculator to do computation. If you have lost it, don't worry. Into ASO, we are also providing or we are also shipping or we are we are selling and distributing original scientific calculator. So the diameter of copper wire is 9.9966 negative four meter. 9.9960 exponent negative 4 meter. So it is in terms of what? Millimeter. So remember, the diameter of wire can be by. Don't think that the diameter of wire is like equilibrium velocity or like resistivity of wire, right? The diameter of a wire can vary. Depends on the thickness of what? Of the wire. Okay? Is physics beautiful? Some of them say, yeah, 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 somehow. Okay. Whatever your response, I want to tell you that this is the match you have to play. So, ladies and gentlemen, if that the case, you can allow me now to present it to you. Example eight. Problem number eight. Should not get tired. And this problem number eight, it's a question from Advanced Certificate Secondary Education Examination of 2005. 
2005. Don't know where is my watch. 2005. Of course, also we have books distributed to our students. So these past papers are very important for you to learn. So you can take it in, in order to realize the facts. I want to tell you that in Tanzania Online Advanced Secondary Schools, the square bracket in July M, we are also equipping our students with books. So this is the sample book that's called the Advanced Physics Book 1 Review. It contains questions and answers from 2003 to 2016. So this question now is come from paper one of 2005. 2005. So 2005. So when I'm writing, let me ask you one of my students to open a exam of 2005. So this is an example of this one. So it's advanced certificate secondary education of 2005. Paper one. So this is a refund. Okay. Mm -hmm. The questions say that okay, it's, it's a little bit concepty for the way it is because you have to think and also. You have to think and remember what we taught you in basic applied mathematics or in advanced mathematics. So the question states that current in a wire, if you don't, we don't teach you these kinds of these types of questions in class, when you find them in exams, it will be a surprise for you. Varies according. According to the relation, according to the relation, which is current is equal to four plus what? Plus two t square. Four plus two t square. Then you have from one. How many coulomb? How many Coulomb? How many Coulomb pass across the wire? How many Coulomb pass across the wire in a time interval? When you open paper one of two thousand. And five, just to go the questions of current, which I guess is in section B. Interval between t is equal to what? t is equal to five seconds, and t is equal to ten seconds. That is. One, one. one two, what constant current would transport the same charge in the same time either? What constant current? What constant current would transport the same charge? Would transport the same charge. What current will transfer the same charge in the same time interval? In the same time interval. So this is the question we have to answer. Do you find it? Yeah. This question number? Ten. Number? Ten. So means to be far. So let me write it correctly. The good thing is one of I have some physical students. One of them, his name is called D. Johnson, the career, and the other one is called D. Joshua. 
So I gave them to open in order to prove that what I'm telling you is true. So the far advanced certificate second education. For international students, this is uh, its abbreviations of uh, national advanced exams for from 60 for form for form 60 students in Tanzania. Should not confuse with this referencing because it's not important for you. The issue is just can deal with the question. For the international students, for the Tanzanians, they are happy to see that we are solving some of the questions appeared in Nectar or in the final exams of advanced physics. So if I advanced certificate secondary education of 2005, paper one, we have three papers in Tanzania. Paper one, paper two of physics, paper three. So this is paper one. Section B, is this it, Johnson? B or C? B. Question number what? 10. Question number 10. So you can order this book. You can order any book. We have so many. And we have a library that we call Tanzania Online Advanced Library. To'a. This is To'a. This is all level library. So for A level library, it's abbreviation Sizoti To'a. Tanzania Online Advanced Library. So there we are equipping our students with notes. We are equipping our students with books such as Roger Mancaster, which is actually called the principle of physics, uh, what's called just advanced physics, Nelcon, so you have so many books. So how you can order? Just send a message of your order through this telephone number, 0759 Just send a message and then I'll call you. Then we make a business and we can ship these books or we can send to you in any region of the United Republic of Tanzania. Even if you are studying advanced physics in Unguja, you can order books from our online bookstore. And believe me that we are faithful because this work is a work, it's a work of God for us, so God is in charge. So don't worry about your money. We'll try our level best to make sure that you get high quality products in order for you to learn advanced subject in peace of mind. So the question, let us read. How many sentences do we have? We have almost three sentences. So listen carefully. Current in a wire varies according to the relation, which is current is equal to four plus two times time square. That the variations of what of current in a wire, right? So it means the variations of current in wire depend on what time. Right? Huh. Then the first question, how many coulomb pass across the wire in a time interval between 5 seconds and 10 seconds? Coulomb, how many coulomb? Coulomb is the S of 40, quantity of charge. So how many charge pass across the wire in a time of the interval between time, between 5 seconds and 10 seconds? And the majority current carriers, or the current carriers in conductors, we say our T, electrons. But the current carrier in semiconductor, that's the electronics, are electrons and the holes. So you have to distinguish. Because in physics we have conductors, semiconductors, insulators. Insulators, they don't conduct electricity at all at the room temperature, but if you increase temperature to the max, to, which means to the higher higher level, then you can force insulators to conduct electricity, but in a very difficult way. But semiconductors conduct electricity by using electrons and rotary holes, while conductors which are learning current electricity conduct current by using, by, by flow 40 electrons. So remember conductors, they do conduct electricity by flow of electrons unless you have been told in the problem that also protons participated in, in flow of electric current. Does it make a sense? Yeah, thank you. So we have these problems. It's not a difficult question if you have met it, because this is just like it. For example, if you want to play to be a victorious as a team in a particular league, you have to make sure that you do hardy practice or hardy 
a very difficult or very difficult exercises which will which will, will